Today we're talking frame rates, what it is and how you can use it for time lapses, normal speed video and epic mega cool slow motion. So first of all, what the hell is frame rate? Well, as we mentioned in the previous episode, video is basically just a series of pictures stacked together to create an illusion of movement. Every one of these pictures is called a frame. So frame rate is basically just a term for how many frames that are stacked in every one second of video. This is also known as FPS or short for frames per second. Filmmakers use different frame rates for different purposes. 24 and 30 FPS is considered normal speed video. If you use a lower frame rate than that, like 12 or 10, you will get a choppy video that looks exactly like this. 24 frames per second gives you a bit more motion blur and is more normal in the cinematic universe and 30 FPS gives you a more clean and crispy look which is more used in commercials and TV series. So if that is considered normal speed video, what happens if we stack even more frames into every second of video? That is when we get into the exciting world of slow motion. Let's say we record one shot at 30 FPS or 30 frames per second and we record another one at 60 FPS or 60 frames per second. Then in the 60 FPS version we have 30 more frames than needed to get a smooth playback and that means that we can slow this down to 50%. And if we shoot at 120 frames per second we can slow it down 4 times or 25%. Now you might wonder, do you have to slow down the footage just because you shot it at a higher frame rate? And the short answer is no, but if you watched my exposure episode, you know that we want to keep our shutter speed at double to whatever frame rate we use. So if you were to shoot a video at 120 frames per second, you need a shutter speed of around 250. And if you don't slow this down, you will have normal speed video shot at a way too high shutter speed, meaning that you will have basically no motion blur and that might look a bit unnatural. But what about if you haven't decided yet how the final video will turn out? This is often the case for me on low budget shoots when I haven't planned out the whole video. So just to be safe, I shoot everything at 60 FPS in case I want to slow it down later. This will of course give me the wrong motion blur if I don't slow it down, but to be honest, between 30 and 60 FPS, the difference isn't really noticeable. So what about if we use frame rates lower than normal speed video? As I mentioned before, you would get a very choppy video unless you speed it up. So when we use frame rates lower than 24, we're getting into the world of fast motion or time lapses and hyperlapses. Now most cameras can shoot at frame rates lower than 24, so we have to use photos instead. Luckily, most cameras have a setting called interval shooting, which lets you set the camera to take a photo every second or every fifth or every tenth second. Then you bring all of these photos into your editing software and connect them to get 24 frames in every second and you get a super fast video. Now remember that we need 24 frames to get smooth video, so you need 24 individual photos to get just one second of time-lapse. Meaning that a 10 second time-lapse video will take 240 seconds or 6 minutes to shoot just because you only capture one frame every second. Another reason to shoot at frame rates lower than 24 frames per second is to get something called step printing. This is an in-camera effect that is using lower frame rates together with a slow shutter speed to get a blurry and choppy effect to show someone that is, let's say, drunk or crazy or just a stylistic way to use slow motion. If your camera allows you to use shutter speed slower than your frame rate, you can get this effect even at 30 FPS by just cranking up that shutter speed to, let's say, one fifth of a second. So when should you use the different frame rates? Well, we use the lower frame rates when we want to create this step printing effect or fast motion. And fast motion can be both time lapses to show the passing of time, but you can also combine that with movement to create a hyperlapse, which is basically just a moving time lapse. 
and the normal speed videos are at 24 and 30 fps. 24 when you want a bit more motion blur like this cinematic look and 30 when you want it more crispy and clean for that commercial look. 60 frames per second is great for general slow motion when your subject isn't moving too fast but you still want to keep that dramatic mood. 120 frames per second is great for fast moving subjects like someone running to slow that footage down even more. And if we get up to 240 fps and even more that is when we want to show things that we can't really see with our own eyes. Something that is basically just moving too fast for our own brains to process. The higher frame rate you have you should be more and more careful because if your videos get too slow they'll just get boring. So an interesting way to keep the pacing up while being able to slow it down is to use something called speed ramping. We'll also cover this in a separate episode but basically that is when you use different speeds in different parts of the shot. Like this example here, this video would be super long if I used slow motion throughout the entire shot. But to have normal speed in the beginning, then slow motion and then normal speed again will get a very interesting clip to watch and we don't have to use basic cuts. So slow motion is just a tool in your filmmaker's toolbox and should be used as such. Look at the shot and ask yourself do I need slow motion here? Is there a reason to slow this down? Because slow motion won't make your video cinematic. Good planning, lighting and camera movements will. That is all.